Bring this home. Yeah. I want to validate for those who just question where you were at during this time. Yeah. Can you speak to where you were at or who you were around or, and I'm not going to say a name, but I'm just going to say bad boy. Shook Knight got shot in the no, ass no. in Miami? Damn. Because I was at. I, what? Yeah. Okay. Wait. I was fighting with Paris Hilton in the bathroom and Nova. Oh, shit. Okay. Yes. I wasn't going there, but okay, wait. When Shook yeah. Shun- <laughs> Knight got shot in the ass, which we all I was remember. There, yeah. At the MT, it was MTVs. I was there. I was doing a party on Star Island in the yacht. And, and you and, and Paris um, got into a brief Yeah, over Scott's torch. Over Scott's Yeah, because yeah, I didn't approve of him fucking with her. Yeah. I thought it was bad. He, she had him spending. I'm like, this bitch is worth 100 million. Why are you spending all your money? Let yeah. this bitch spend some money. It's got like to spend, though. Yeah. He, he, yeah, on a bunch of used shit. <laughs> like, he like everything brand new except for pussy. Yeah. Never understood that. He, and he paid top dollar. For the use. Isn't the more beat up it is. Oh. Who the fuck yeah. bring a porn star home and expects to be happy? Hey, man. Hey. Bitch brings her work home with her. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, can you please hold this pillow? Oh, like, shit, oh, shit. Okay. So, we're almost, he's about to get the cum shot. Oh. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Did you want Linguini and Clams for good? Right, oh, God. <laughs> Let's be real. So I was going to ask about. <laughs> yeah, fuck Paris. <laughs> anyway, we was arguing, and I, and, and I told her she smelled like dirty bed sheets, and she oh. called me a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Paris Hinton called you a nigga? Yeah. She calls every all black people niggas. So anyway. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I mean, and I was like, I was like, for real, I'm about to fuck you up. And you heard pop, pop. Yeah. And I'm like, we're in Nobu. Why would there be shooting, you know, in Nobu? Yeah. And I'm sitting here confused. This Paris Hill literally goes to the bathroom, ah, messes up her hair, ah, and goes screaming. Out, don't know, we don't know what happened. This bitch was looking for the paparazzi. She wanted to be the first one. Shots fired and this bitch is ready for a photo op. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck? I go to walk out. They got Suge. Suge was laid on his stomach. And you can see they had shot him in the ass because he had the red stay. <laughs> he was on his stomach and they rolled his ass out of notebook. I never seen people so happy to see somebody get shot. Like literally. We walked out. <laughs> he was like, yo, did you hear? Sure got shot. I was like, that's who that big nigga was. His face was there. They was like, yeah, they shot him in the ass. <laughs> they was let everybody. Just, th- that was, and that was it. Did you hear Sure got shot? Yeah, they shot him in the ass. <laughs> like, Damn, okay. <laughs> you were there. You, yeah. you were there. Um, so I don't know. Last I was we should have started talking back then. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, can you explain your connection or just where you were at or around and who for Bad Boy Records and Uptown Records? Just anyone within that, just what is your connection at all to any of that, if anything? My di- direct connection would be, I'll be sure at this point. Um, I was always around, see? Like, you got to understand, dibbling and dabbling in the dark arts and sex world and being a ghostwriter and then being a public artist, I'm kind of living a double life anyway. But I knew Kim and I knew Kimora. We weren't friends. I wasn't a part of their clique, but we all partied together. They should do a documentary. They did a documentary about Freaknik. They should do a documentary about the Kit Kat Club. Ooh. It was an old theater that had been renovated into a nightclub. And, you know, all of the old, like, opera seats were VIPs, private VIPs. Everything happened in there. And, and you know, they had the, it was Diddy's idea to pass out the, Opera glasses, so people could spy on each other while they were fucking in each other's oh, shit. Eyes wide shut. It was it was wild. He it, that was at the beginning. The Kit Kat Club was the beginning of him going from Puffy to Diddy. You know what I mean? There- what if I told you investing wasn't just for the suits and ties? It's for everyday folk. It was a it was a big change. Um, but that was when he first started really attacking art and real artistry. He wanted whack artists. Um, like, I'll never forget when he was working with a street team and he had them all in there and it was young boys and he was talking about, listen to me, we don't want talented artists. Stop bringing me talented motherfuckers. Talented motherfuckers is always trying to run the fucking show and they think because they got talent that you need to, we need motherfuckers that need us. That's a producer's mindset. I can see that. I'm Mary, J, Mary J. Blige was his prototype mm. for what having no talent 
can do if you're willing to play the game. There's no way in the world that at the position where she sat at the time of that 10th anniversary and the fact that Beyonce was a freshman coming into the game, that she should have been literally bowing down and worshiping this nobody bitch who only got a record out of Wyclef. And it wasn't even the actual record. It was the remix to save the first record that don't nobody ever talk about. Like, I just want to get that the record straight. That's the history. That's the history. Oh. So imagine what it did for every artist that was her peer at that time to see Mary J. Blige, the queen of R&B hip hop, bow down to this up and comer. Pass Let the them torch. all know she's the one. She's the next one in charge. Like it's a, it's a nod. You know, it's a big nod. And it tells everybody else around, oh, that's the, that's the chosen one. Jack for Shane, you know, after all of that hero worship, she couldn't have, you know, Beyonce got the billion. She couldn't help Mary J. Blige pay the can do. Cannot. <laughs> she could have just cut a check. You know, Mary just got her titties done, Jack. Huh? She just got her titties done. It's yeah. Brand new, just like a week ago. Same, they couldn't do her brain and her heart. Oh, God. They need okay. to go back in there. There's more work to be done. <laughs> okay. Okay. She got her titties done at 50 something. I'm I mean, she's on TV. She got a. I mean, she, she... Who's watching? And just the last season, she might have something to do with that. Yeah. Jack, so let, let's speak on you for a second. Uh, we're, weird bitch. I'm we're sorry. In, yeah, we're in summer. Let us know what you have coming up next uh, because real life does want to be a part of the Jack journey. Um, the well, new I think and the we're old, a part and, of each other's journey at this point. Yeah, a million subscribers once again, probably touching it right now as we speak. I know. Um, and you are a major. I couldn't be happier for you guys. No, thank you. Thank and you. I'm glad that this is going to be over so Angel can go on vacation and get some sleep. Yeah, you're right. And Ange, we can't wait. No, Ange, we were talking off camera and Ange has, his business acumen is crazy. Yeah. And uh, we got to definitely discuss some business with Ange Let me tell you something. very soon. Mostly everything that I understand about working with people and doing business with people and living as an entrepreneur, not as a worker, but as a boss. I learned from that man. I'm not going to get too much into his business because people are already gossiping. But what I will say is you got to look at a person who manages to hold on to relationships for decades and ask yourself, what's, what's real between these people that keep them in the game for 20 years, 30 years? Your average friendship nowadays doesn't last more than five years and then people journey on or they move away or someone gets divorced and they got you and they got this, you know. Um, but when you have people that truly know you, you're a blessed woman. And um, so what's going on? Realjag.com. There you go. What's going on? Um, love. There you go. And partnership. And, there you go. Um, there's this guy that's always hanging around me now and he decided he wants to do a documentary about my life. Sounds entertaining, just the thought of. And he's filming right now. There you go. There you go. There you go. Look and, at that. Um, Look at that. Um, and that's yeah. just a blessing itself because. And then yeah. reintroducing the world to all of the Philadelphia content. There you go. Um, and to be able to put all of that back up for everyone that was there before, who um, that got taken away from, and to be able to give them Jay Z unplugged again, because we will be uploading Jay Z unplugged to the new Philadelphia Broadcasting Network in the next 10 days. I think part of the reason why they went so hard after the network the first time was just because I put that up. Yeah. And guess what? I'm gonna put it up again. Mm. Cause I can. Because that's just as much my legacy as it is yours, Sean. Especially at this point. And I want the world to see it. And I want everybody to have an opportunity to witness what you tried to slump because you couldn't get me to say yes. You were supposed to disappear, Jack. You were supposed to disappear. He tried. <laughs> when I think about that night at 4040, when he told me he was going to make sure that the world never knew about me, he was going to make sure I disappeared. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know, Sean. It's a big world. We'll see. So what do you think your talent is? I don't know yet. I'm going to go ahead and say we... As as beautiful as your singing is, 
it's got to be your voice. Because if you never sung again, your voice has reached the heavens. I mean, you're touching millions and millions and millions. And that's some that some people can never even say they've done with their song. True. So, I mean, you now guess what I get to do? Everyone who has been listening. In about two months, they'll be able to go to realjag.com and they'll be able to stream all the Jaguar Wright music they want to hear that has never been released before, right. that has never been heard. And you won't have to worry about whether or not people were hurt to make it. It's all cruelty free music. And that is the last thing, our, our campaign. Um, Odell and I have decided to make it a go. We're going to do it. Um, it's a up and running, cruelty-free-artistry.org. For two, real. Two things. Like empires, prices rise and fall. Money, Graham. Like, um, yes. You, uh, you will be hopefully singing live somewhere, hopefully. But yeah. also Tokyo Tony, uh, we spoke on that. Yeah, y'all saw us each other in person, and that possibly yeah. could be seen oh, no, as soon as possible on, on realjack.com. <laughs> and Jack, just the last thing we gotta ask you for the fans and the viewers, I just really want to know where what's the end game? Cruelty free artistry. Period. If I have a position to stand on, all of this pain to create all of this happiness and no one knows what's really going on. If you knew how Clive Davis used to torture Luther Vandross, it might make you look at some of those Luther Vandross albums a little different, you know? Like even when we did One's Gotta Go, I went back and I listened to what I had to say about Prince and Michael Jackson, and I tripled down on that. If it could have spared him being a victim, fuck that music. You know? I, we, we shouldn't have to naturally expect as artists that we're going to have to be victimized to get ahead. It, how does something that God gave us that brings so much joy end up in such fucked up shit all the time? I want to be able to look at a young artist and see her grow up and know she never had to have what happened to me happen to her to get a Grammy to get a sold out tour, to get a movie. That's my end game at this point. Can we make good art without having to hurt someone to do it? Well, Can we send our kids to auditions and pray to God they don't get fucking touched? You know, I, is that really asking for so much? Amen. Well, I was talking to my mama today and she said, uh, do you think that girl Jaguar really be telling the truth? I said, I don't know how you see it online, but if you was in there where and she looks you dead in your eye, you gonna know that she is. <laughs> With that being said, Jaguar right, you are a real life street star. <laughs> And many, many more, because I promise you, you coming here is your blessing, and it's our honor.